Welcome everyone to our first Radical Kitchen. Um, the Radical Kitchen is a series of community picnic talks here in uh, Francis Carey's pavilion, um, co-hosted by Mazi Mas. And um, today, those of you who came are very lucky because we have both Mazi Mas, Mazi Mas's family, friends and supporters, and Francis Carey here with us today to start the program off. So this program was very much inv uh, inspired by um, uh, some early discussions I had with Francis. Uh, I'm Amal, I'm the projects curator here at the Serpentine. So I run a lot of the community projects that happen outside of the gallery context. And it was so amazing when we first met Francis to hear his story of why he designed the pavilion the way he designed it. And we were excited by his um, conversation around what does it mean to create spaces for communities, spaces for gathering in cities like London, cities that are increasingly more privatized, where it's difficult to build um, movements around urgent social issues. And so we were really thinking, let's create a program with inspiring groups like Mazi Mas um, and honor people around London that are dedicating their life to transforming the city and to social change through a series of picnics. Um, so we were really inspired by Mazi Mas and how they create, um, how eating is such a powerful um, act of community and how through their project they tell stories through food. Um, so I wanted to hand over now to Roberta uh, from Mazi Mas and she's going to tell the story of Mazi Mas. Hello everyone, thanks for coming. Um, welcome to the Serpentine and Mazimas. First we want to say thank you to the Serpentine, for Francis, for Amal, Jana and Lizzie and all the others who made this possible because it's like a dream to be here. And I said I booked the weather before so it's sunny. <laughs> <laughs> I've been lucky so far. So Mazimas is, means with us in Greek. Uh, it was founded by Nikki. Where is she? But <laughs> Nikki. So we met, I was doing a volunteer, I was volunteering in a kitchen uh, because I'm the same as all the Mazimas ladies. I was a woman who came here as an immigrant. Um, and then I got pregnant, got married, and then had my son, stayed at home. And then after my son grew up and I said, oh, I want to go back to work. And people say, oh, but there are no jobs for you. And I said, what? Not possible. So I volunteer in a cafe and Nikki was there. And then we realized in this cafe, we find this all these other wonderful women with amazing talents cooking. And no, they are all there doing voluntary jobs and none of them have jobs. So we said, so what's happening that the women who do this amazing food have no jobs. So most of them do unpaid jobs because jobs women do are always caring jobs. They do for free with love. So they cook, they look after everyone. So they are unpaid. And we realized that the cooking with that women do unpaid, you see the restaurants, and if you look in all the restaurants, only men working as well. So they are paid to do the jobs the women um, do for free. So we said, but they are the ones who really carry the, the inheritance of uh, the food, the history and the memories and families. So we said, we want this woman to, these women need to be there cooking because when they are unpaid, as you know, I call them, I was part of the invisible army of women who inhabit all cities in the world, doing all this wonderful basic work, fundamental of society, of looking after children, uh, bringing up the children, looking after the elderly, and they feel isolated, they have no money, sometimes they are vulnerable to emotional and uh, financial abuse, and so we said, great, so we need to create a place these women can bring their talents and cook and earn the money and feel uh, independent and go and live the lives they want to live and we eat amazing food as you can see because as I say in Mazimaz we have one ingredient that m I think lacks in most of the places love this ingredient you can see in the food because as I said yesterday we spent probably seven hours in the kitchen doing this food so it's something that maybe in a professional quick kitchen is gonna be quick but it's not gonna have all the care and the, that we put in the food so so Mazimas was funded, was founded to, to bring these women to become the chefs, to have their own business and, and to take the world. And uh, 
become part of society valuable and bring their children up and of course influence their communities and we eat wonderful food so we think it's a perfect recipe <laughs> um, so the food today we have uh, Iranian food and some uh, South American Spanish food and we have uh, Nasrin is our Iranian chef one of our Iranian chefs and she's gonna talk to you a, a little bit about the dishes she makes and the story behind the dishes, because all this, the dishes we have and the food we cook had stories before, behind. So, Nasrin. Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, Can you tell us about the, the cuckoo? Oh, yes. The cuckoo is from, uh, I've got a background of Azari borderline with Gilan, so uh, near the Caspian Sea. And the food I had today, it was cuckoo. Cuckoo is the, um, uh, like, um, um, lots of herbs, um, edamame beans, eggs, and uh, feta cheese, and barberries. Uh, it's like omelette, but it's just a elaborate omelette. <laughs> As usual of the Iranian food, it's always so many different ingredients, so many different flavor goes together very well, like a poetry, Iranian poetry is really nice. And also I had the dessert loaves. It's uh, like a um, almond um, sweet. Uh, we made it, there's no um, any sort of uh, butter or oil on it. And uh, if you prepare it with the almond, grate the almond yourself, it will taste much nicer with, of course, uh, precious saffron, rose water, and cardamom, Iranian staple for food. And uh, for dessert as well, as and you the rose petals. Oh yeah, rose petals. <laughs> as if we all had rose petals everywhere. <laughs> Her rose petals yeah. are even special. Um, <laughs> rose petal is just engraved in my soul. I have to say because I grew up uh, going back to Azerbaijan. My grandfather had a rose orchard. And in the summertime, it was really hot. Normally, we used to go in the summer, and it was really hot. Um, by the bushes, normally, snake used to go and uh, stay behind the bushes, under the bushes, cool down. And I remember my mom and my uh, aunties used to say, don't go there, there's a snake there. But the smell, the look was irresistible. You know, the smell, the hotter the day was, the smell was stronger. And asking me to go there, make some fake nail or just put it in my lips like a lipstick. So, and my mom used to put it in every food. Anything she could, she used that. She used to make it like a tea. She used to make it in her, put it in her um, yogurt with the cucumber and mint. Uh, used to make a drink, cold drink with that. And so, uh, rose petal today you had it, um, it was very similar to what I had it from my grandfather orchard. Unfortunately, that one is finished, <laughs> but I have to go back and bring more for Mazimaz. Hopefully, very soon we could have a good supply of that one. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So thanks, guys. So every week, um, Mazi Mas are going to share um, their recipes um, that we're sh that they're serving in the picnics, and you're um, able to support Mazi Mas by buying the two items that Nasreen just described. They're available from the cafe all day today. Mm. Um, but every week, we're inviting a different community group because we're also asking for. Um, these different inspiring groups around London for their own recipes for social change. How do they care for each other? How do you build a resilient community? Um, so today we have Francis because you kind of inspired this whole program. And um, yeah, it would be great to hear from you a little bit about the background to coming to this pavilion and your ideas around gathering and what the who gathers under the tree and what happens under it. Hi, hey, hello, hey. Um, so, um, I mean, I'm happy that we have some men in the round <laughs> that, that will support me, you know. Exposed to all of you is like, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's not so. Um, yeah, I mean, um, it's wonderful. It's wonderful to know that you exist, uh, you know. So, in the, I used to say 
sometimes stupidly when I do a lecture, to say, without uh, the women, there is no Africa. So now I will say, without the women, our world will be very different, you know. So that's why I will, I will ask you, if, did you try the food that we have today? Because I feel ashamed to talk about architecture. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, it's really, really love inside. Seven hours love, that what she said is really good. You, are, you know, I was eating, you know, and uh, uh, Melissa took my plate away from myself, so. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, it's, it's wonderful to be here with you and uh, to see what you have been creating and uh, uh, to underline things in our society that lead you to create this. I will say, if it's hard, there is a, a, a chance. You know, if you have a challenging moment, it's a chance to, to discover things that you was pregnant and you couldn't find a job. You raise your kids, you raise us. Now, women are raising us. And I don't know why we forget this, you know? I don't know why. But the thing that you had no job leaded you to create this structure that I, I will encourage. Always uh, try to use the weaknesses in society to create something powerful. So I'm proud to be here today and to, to, to stay with you to see you have been going through very hard ways. I don't know how to describe it, but again, to today, being in this pavilion, it is hot inside, but I feel um, it's, it's from the human uh, perspective, it's warm here because it's all of you. And it is London, the diversity that we really, we can see in you, you know. And yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's that quality what this city has. And to thank you to, yeah, accept to come to our pavilion. Um, <coughs> I will look to Vanessa. If I say stupid things, tell me stop, okay? Yeah. 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 No, you know, um, um, I'm happy today because is that what I wanted to see uh, happen inside the structure in this wonderful park, Royal Park, you know? Um, I wanted to see the chance that people come together and gather together, really relax. Um, I know we're getting recorded, so always if I think about it, I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm getting panicked because uh, I have to say very uh, intellectual thing, but I don't care about it, and that is the problem, you know? <laughs> um, so, I mean, to get together together, and then starting with uh, activity uh, launched by women is for me a, 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 a privilege. You know, when I started my work um, in Burkina Faso, and if you can see how the women, really the women stand to help to make a, a floor or to carry the water. It's really it's not, nothing that I need to read to tell you. If you show how they, they, they took in bucket, like 10 kilometers to bring water to the building site, it is unbelievable. So I'm not prizing you because I simply love you, but I'm prizing you because you play this important role in our life. In my specific life, without the women in Gando, I would never be able to build, you know? You have, for example, an activity which required like uh, um, one, 100 liter water, you know, or 200. Do you know these, these oil tanks, these oil barrels that we have is 200 liter. Um, and if you want it to be full, uh, my people just give a new, some women just grabs it. I can tell you within an hour, you will have like 5,000 liter water and you don't know where this water is coming from, yeah. So that is the role these women play in my life. That's why I'm really proud to have you here. Um, I'm not saying fake, because this is reality. <coughs> so the pavilion is made for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's made for you. It's made for you. It is open. And um, I have to say thank you to the servant that has accepted this idea. Normally, serious architect will say, what do you have to deal with it? And I think it is to forget who we are and uh, um, who our mothers, sisters are, you know. So, yeah, uh, I was saying to you, this, we brought our big baobab inside the Kensington Park. It is a big baobab. Uh, home people just gather under trees. The, it is a kindergarten. It is the serious space to discuss. It's where the women just talk about recipes 
a problem with their husband too. Yeah. So how they sh and then how they can educate the kids in the best way. Um, so that is it. This is the baobab I wanted to bring here. The way people just gather outside in the shaded place and just to talk. Um, it is open. All the time you will see people are allowed to enter and they're allowed to go. It's not, it's not formal. And so I love the, the title of your, your kitchen, Informal. Um, I really like it, love it and I hope we will have more mains. Uh, but I don't want to share you with all the mains <laughs> normally at all. Yeah. yeah. We wanted to create a big canopy um, just to allow people to sit, stay under the pavilion, and relax. And uh, I mean, it is solid. Don't fear. If it rains, you will love it. Um, I'm always, always thinking about the water in Africa. And then when I had the chance, I was saying it's not just, um, uh, it's not just um, a symbolic gesture to try to collect water. It's reality. So we can collect. In this drainage system, we can collect 9,000 9, 9, uh, liter of water. It would, could be more, but we didn't want it to exaggerate it. Um, so my work tried to connect people, but to work with nature. So this is about it. So if we neglect matter, nature, again, the women, mother, nature is a woman. You know, if we neglect it, if we work against it, it is our end. Yeah. So that's why. Uh, we try even to collect, even just like a little symbolic. We try to, to, to add, um, to add system that is uh, important for our survival in a design, even in the s in the in, in, at Hyde Park. That's what I try to do, and for me, it's amazing to see all of you sitting, to hear some cr some kids crying. Are there any cry uh, kids? Push them to cry a little bit. No. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, yeah, so that is it, yeah. And so, I mean, have no more to say than let enjoy it. Let uh, enjoy this great food and hope that mo people from London will come and it will be much inclusive. I will hope to have like from London, you know, all people from that country that engage in other, in other part of the city, that, that the serpent and get them here. It's not just, you know, um, um, it's, it's, it's open and that will be amazing. It will be amazing. So thank you for this wonderful um, speech. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Do you want to say more about the recipe? More about the food? No. no? Yeah. Thank you both. Um, well, we have a lot of the Mazi Mas chefs here. And it's so wonderful to have you all join us on this first session. And we were gonna open it up to the audience to have um, a discussion if anyone had any questions for Francis or Mazimas. Well, the, the question I heard a lot is people, can you give me the recipe? <laughs> I said, you have to wait. Yeah, we're hoping to put together a series of uh, recipe books and all of the stories from the different community groups. Um, and that we're going to be here every Wednesday at 1 o'clock um, throughout July and August. Um, there are many groups that are going to be joining us. Um, next week, we're going to be with Women for Refugee Women. Um, and I hope you can join us then. Thank you so much to Francis and to all of the Mazimas uh, team and the chefs for this amazing picnic that we had today. And thank you all for joining us.